Hello everyone, I am Narendra Sharma. Today I will discuss about the Deming's philosophy, a set of 14 principles about continuous process improvement in the organization, such as create constancy of purpose for continual improvement, adopt the new philosophy, eliminate the need of mass inspection, stop awarding business based on price alone, improve the system constantly and forever, institute modern method of training, institute the leadership, drive out fear, break down barriers between departments, no exhortation or preaching for the workforce, no numerical quotas, remove barriers that rob the pride of workmanship, encourage education and self-improvement, and action is required to accomplish the transformation. All these 14 points I will discuss in this lecture, so stay with me till the end of this lecture. The Deming's philosophy, a set of 14 principles given by Dr. Deming about continuous process improvement. Before moving in this uh, lecture, take a brief introduction of Do uh, Dr. Deming. The full name of Dr. Deming was Dr. W. Edwards Deming. He was an unknown government statistician in U.S. In 1950, Japan was trying to recover from the devastation of Second World War. The late W. Edwards Deming at the time, a virtually unknown government statistician in the United States. No one in the U.S. paid much attention to Deming's theories on how statistics could be used to improve industrial quality. Japanese industrialists decided to hire Deming as their consultant. Dr. Deming gave the first of many series of lectures to Japanese management. The title of the course was The title of the course was Elementary Principles of the Statistical Control of Quality. It was attended by 230 Japanese managers of industrial firms, engineers and scientists. Japanese listened Dr. Deming so well that in a few short decades Japan became one of the most successful industrial nation on earth and see that the effect made in Japan once meant low quality the phrase has now come to denote the highest quality. This was the effect of the series of lectures of Dr. Deming in Japan. And hence, he was awarded by the Medal of Sacred Treasure. In 1960, Emperor Hirohito awarded Dr. Deming the Medal of the Sacred Treasure. The citation with the medal was, the Japanese people attribute the rebirth of Japanese industry to W. Edwards Deming. This was the honor given by the Japanese people, people to Dr. Deming. The Deming Award was instituted in Japan to recognize the outstanding developments and innovations in the field of quality improvement. And the highest honor is on the walls of main lobby of Toyota's headquarters in Tokyo hang three portraits. One is of the company's founder, other one is of current chairman of Toyota and the largest portrait is of Dr. Deming. This was the honor given by the Toyota to Dr. Deming. And talking about the Deming's vision, Dr. Deming's vision of what a firm can do by using the total quality management approach to continual improvement is summarized in his famous 14 points. The Deming's approach centers on creating an environment in which the 14 points can be implemented toward the achievement of quality. Now discussing about the Deming's 14 points about total quality management one by one. Starting with the first principle, this is create constancy of purpose. This implies that you have to create dedication to follow the continual improvement of product and service. Constant improvement is the key to stay in business. If you want to stay in business, you have to constantly improve. Innovation is promoted to become competitive and to provide jobs. Allocate the resources for long term profitability. Develop the family culture in the organization. Now the point number two, adopt the new philosophy. Seek continual improvement, refuse to accept non-conformance. Any kind of non-conformance cannot be accepted at any cost. Prioritize the customer satisfaction over profitability. Always prioritize satisfaction of the customer over the profitability of the organization. Because if you success to satisfy your customer, your profitability will improve automatically. Concentrate on defect prevention rather than defect detection. Involve everyone in the journey of quality. Learn statistical methods for process control. And you have to, you have also asked the supplier that he should provide the statistical evidence for quality improvement. 
eliminate the need of mass inspection. Mass inspection is costly and unreliable. This is the point number three. Therefore, replace the mass inspection with sample inspection. Quality is built in product and service as statistical evidence. That means the quality should be reflected in your product or service as a statistical evidence. Use statistical techniques for process improvement. Improve the process continuously and make the product right in first time. Prevention of defect is better than inspection of all parts. Prevent the defect right at its source. And the point number four. Stop awarding business based on price alone. Business should not be awarded on the basis of low bid. Price has no meaning without quality. Have a single supplier for each item. Develop a long-term relationship of loyalty and trust with supplier. Minimize the total cost by minimizing variation. Purchasing agents must be trained in statistical process control. If they, uh, if the purchasing agent trained in statistical process control, they can make a better decision for the organization when they are making any kind of purchase from the vendor or the supplier. Improve constantly and forever the system. This is the point number five. Institute continuous process improvement for every process. Search problems continually to improve quality and productivity in the organization. Promote innovation in every field of the organization. Encourage people to share innovative ideas for improvement at workplace. Reduce the expected variation continually using statistical process control. Now come to the point number six, institute modern method of training. This point includes allocate resources to train employees to perform their jobs in the best manner possible. Training helps to make better use of employee, train the people to adopt change in the organization, train the employees to use statistical methods for continuous process improvement, train the employees to use the best utilization of resources and the last one is train the employees to reduce waste in process. Point number seven, adopt and institute leadership. Supervisors are not to punish the people but to lead. Therefore, leadership is a very critical factor at supervisor level. And to improve the supervisory skills, you, you have to improve the leadership skills in the supervisor, at supervisor level. Supervisors must be trained with statistical methods, support them to create a positive and supportive environment. Encourage them to maintain the pride in workmanship, communicate the organizational goals regularly and take immediate action on report of any kind of non conformance Point number eight, drive out fear throughout the organization. Any kind of fear in employees hamper to deliver their best and when the people are feared, the people start uh, stop asking, to que asking questions. People fear to ask questions and continue, continue to do wrong thing. Fear causes ignorance of organizational goals and poor supervision. Fear caused by job insecurity, physical harm and performance appraisals. To drive out fear, provide adequate training and resources to, the, to do the job. Create the environment of mutual trust. Treat the employees with dignity. Encourage open and effective communication and teamwork. And welcome new ideas for improvement at workplace now point number nine break down barriers between departments departments are generally competing with each other they have goal conflicts and avoid to shoulder the responsibility to break down barriers among the departments create cross-functional teams from different departments promote team culture to tackle the problem at workplace implement the trainings in teams and change the attitude from I to V. Include everyone in the journey of quality. Now the point number 10. Eliminate exhortations for the workforce. In absence of resources, exhortations or preaching produce irritation or frustration in employees. Exhortations do nothing but express management's desires. The causes of low quality and low productivity belong to the system not to the people. Workforce cannot be motivated with just exhortations, preaching or stories. To improve the system, ensure the availability of tools and methods for the people. Provide the necessary resources to manufacture a product. Provide clear operational guidelines 
what to do and how to do. Now the point number 11, another important principle, eliminate numerical quotas for the workforce. Quotas focus on quantity rather than quality and therefore employees try to achieve quotas by hook or by crook. When you provide quotas for a week, for a month or for a year, employees try to achieve that particular quota by hook or by crook and it will kill desire of continuous improvement in the employees. For continuous improvement, use process approach in place of quotas. Use statistical methods to control and improve the process. Avoid the result driven approach. Instill the habit of continuous process improvement day by day. Now come to the point number 12. Remove barriers that rob pride of workmanship. Barriers that rob the pride of workmanship are systems problem, not the people's problem. Poor designs or poor process control, inadequate training are the example of systems problem. Much more are punitive supervision, inadequate or insufficient equipment, preference, quota or target over quality. And to restore the pride of workmanship, plan for long term goals. Prefer quality over quota and process approach in place of result driven approach. Provide operational job descriptions, proper tools and materials to, to the employees and maintain the stress free environment and dignity of work. Point number 13. Encourage education and self improvement. Always encourage employee education apart from regular work. Train and educate the employees on self improvement. Provide training on statistical methods. Provide training on continuous improvement. Provide training on problem solving. Regular education program on organizational goals. Education program on change management. This is another critical factor. Whenever there is a change in the organization, people try to resist that change. Therefore, education on education program on change management is a very necessary and a critical factor in the organization among the employees. And the last point is take action to accomplish the transformation. And this point includes top management must commit it for ever improving quality and productivity permanently. Top managers must know what they are committed to. Ensure the implementation of all about 13 principles. Support is not enough. Action is required to accomplish the transformation. If you want to see the transformation like implementation of all about 13 principles in your organization, just support is not work. The just support will not work. You have to take action to accomplish the transformation across the organization. Let's take a quick recap. Create constancy of purpose for continual improvement of product and service. Adopt the new philosophy. Eliminate the need of mass inspection. Stop awarding business based on price. Improve the system constantly and forever. Institute the modern method of training. Institute the leadership. Drive out fear across the organization. Break down barriers between departments. No exhortations of preaching for the workforce. No numerical quotas. Remove barriers that rob the pride of workmanship. Encourage education and self-improvement. And the last point is action is required to accomplish the transformation. Like and share this video. If you have any questions or suggestions regarding this tutorial, then drop your feedback in comment box. And don't forget to subscribe Shake Hand With Life a YouTube channel for my latest video tutorials. Thanks for having stay with me. Have a nice day.